versus Anthony Paybon at Channel 13, WNET, for LifeWire News Service. 13 makes great television programs like Great Performances and Nature. Today I'm here with Rita Kessler, who is going to show us how it's done. So, Rita, what goes on here at the station? Channel 13 is one of 350 public television stations. This is the biggest. And we produce a lot of programs that you see. We're on the air 24 hours a day. And today on the tour, we're going to visit several uh, areas. You're going to see the, uh, the studio. We're going to see uh, meet an editor who does uh, nature and that's our award-winning show that's been on the air for the most time and we'll be welcoming all of you to see what we do here at 13 and give you an opportunity to talk to the engineers as well so welcome wow sounds great what happens in this room is only what you hear nothing about what you see because my clients have already produced their video so it's exactly the way you're going to watch it on television but it comes in here, in, in the case of a nature show, it's missing a whole lot of stuff. Um, it's missing sound effects. It's missing music. It's missing a professional voiceover, someone to tell the story in a professional way. Because a producer would have told the story, but just read it off page. We need someone professional to do it. Um, so, you know, I had a friend ask me once, well, it's a nature show. What's there to do? I mean, you just go out there and record the sounds and you put it on the television. And I said, yeah, well, think about the polar bear coming off, coming out of the den after being, you know, in hibernation for four months. And it breaks through the snow, and there's footsteps on the snow, and the breathing of the, you know, you can see the bear up close, so you have to put the breathing in, and the little cubs come out, and they're whimpering. And so, and I said, okay, so if, if somebody was close enough, like a sound guy like this one right here, was close enough, to be getting those sounds, we wouldn't get them because he would be food. That bear hasn't eaten for, <laughs> hasn't eaten for four months. So these guys are way far away. Hopefully the bear doesn't even know they're there. And we have to put those sounds in. So when you see a close-up of the bear breathing, you hear the breath. When you pull back and see the mountain, wind's blowing across the top of the mountain. We put the wind in. So we do all that stuff, all that building of sound is done here in a studio like performances, American Masters, Masters, Secrets of the Dead, mm -hmm. Nature. Um, Are you working on any of those shows? Yeah, I work on all of them. Oh, very nice. Very. Mm -hmm. How many seasons have they had? <clears throat> well, Great Performances has just had their 40th anniversary last year. For a so number of seasons? Their, they're in their 41st season. Mm -hmm. Wow. From their perspective, how, is it, how important is it to keep, every, to keep everything together in your opinion? Uh, extremely important. I mean, you know, when I'm doing a mix, I think that's what you're talking about when I do the mix. Right. But the, the, the tendency in a mix is, you know, a lot of shows start off quiet, and then they build up the sections, and, you know, and then they get quiet again, and then they'll build up again. Yes. And your tendency when you're first learning to mix is, oh, okay, so I have my voice quieter here at the top, but when I get to this section, well, I bring the voice up, and then now the voice is higher, and then it gets higher again because you get another section. And pretty soon the voice that you started with yeah. and the voice that you finished with are not the same. So the idea for me is that I call voice God. In a mix, voice is God. Yeah. Because I'm, I do documentaries. So you have to make sure that that voice is at, relatively speaking, the same level all the way from the beginning to the end of the show. Uh, my question is, when is the show Animal Homes going to be done? Uh, this show is actually very late for delivery. And the first show airs tomorrow night. Uh -huh. You're taking up your time. <laughs> Animal Homes One airs tomorrow night. This show will be will deliver nine days before air, yeah. and uh, we have over a ten thousand dollar fine from PBS for being so late. Oh, <laughs> they do fine. Oh yeah. I was gonna ask that. Oh yeah. Oh, they are. Nice. Hey, we are taking They're up your time. <laughs> they get you more. Why do they fine you that much? Because we're late. That means yeah. they have they have to take it in and do overtime to get it into the system. Um, here's my attitude about a mix. I wanted to um, ask you 
Six months after um, the show's done, no one will remember what it costs. Okay. They make but when the producer like, is sitting there with his family watching a show, or her family watching a show that they've done, mm -hmm. and it sounds great and it looks great, if it took me two extra days, yeah, he doesn't care. Yeah, right. Sure. Because the idea is that people love it, mm -hmm. the show gets good reviews, mm -hmm. and the next the thing I know, the next show, they're sitting in the same chair again. Right. So that's been my approach all the way through, to do the best job I can do mm -hmm. and take the amount of time that I need to do it. The good thing about this software that I use is it's really intuitive. It's really, I mean, I can do things now that yeah. would take us forever to do. Right. So, you know, I do different types of projects. Here's one I just finished. I'm working on it. This is for a big uh, event. It won't be shown on the air, but it'll be shown at a dinner. In a, in a, in a month. This is Final Cut Pro 7. Um, it's an older program. It's, pr it's, it's fairly common. I know that Avid's used. I've used that in the past. I know that this place is going to be going to Adobe right. Premiere. Uh, and every shot that you saw there was picked by me with a producer, and I picked it, and she, the producer gave me the music. We basically cut every shot. Totally so you'll notice the shots cut to the music. Right? Yeah. Sometimes the words actually work with the, with the music. Right? Well, that's interesting sound too. So he says, I've never been better. Right? And it hits, right? So all of these things hit rhythmically. And I make sure that happens. So in this editing the story, shots. It's, it's a bunch of different shots that I use for a piece of music. I'd say they bring you all the sound. sound. You don't have to pull anything like from a library. I do have to pick things from a library. This song was edited for me. And then I basically took this song and I put the shots that they gave me. They gave me many more shots than we need. And we basically start to put this together. Right? So, so what do you guys want to do? You want to be editors? You want to be producers? You want to be directors? We have Practice. people doing everything, yeah. Um, We're just here at this point. At Lifestyles, we have a media department. So we interact with them. Maybe give them a whole radio. We all have an interactive media department. radio host, but back we do editing, we do video editing. Good, good. This stuff is really cool. You know, what, what you could do in a small room or on your laptop, you couldn't do 20 years ago. You know what I mean? Nope. This is amazing what we could do. You don't sure need is. a big group of people. And you can really tell a story in a way that a book can't or yeah. a painting can't. Mm -hmm. So you use these pictures, these images, and music, yes. and graphics, and you put it all together, and your voice if you want to, right, and, you, the and, and you, do these, you tell these stories, and you can say whatever you want, and you can, you can say something to people that you just couldn't do 20 years, or 30, 40 years ago, in a way that you just couldn't do. So this is really powerful, you know. So my job as an editor is to kind of figure out Look at the shots and figure out which ones I think tell the best story. We have lots of shooting time.